Hey guys, welcome to another uh, short video. Um, today what we're going to do is have a little look at this worked example. Um, so if you have a, give you a second just to read the question. Okay, so what we're saying here is we've got this object, yeah, which has to remain stationary. Uh, so it's going to be in static equilibrium, which means it's not moving. All right. So what this is telling us here is we've got a force pushing in this direction, one in that direction, one in that direction. And it's asking us to calculate what's called the resultant force. So it's going to take all of the forces that are acting on this object and turn them into one single uh, number. Okay. So it's also telling us that we've got the vertical component of this is given in the question so we're only really concerned about what's happening with this horizontally at the first stage and then we'll come back and use that vertical all right so this is um it is a bit of a recap really so it's not anything new um it's things we've done before um, but if we think about it we know what's going on vertically so we don't need to concern ourselves with any forces that are going up in this direction we're only interested in what's going on horizontally there horizontally there and horizontally there when we found the sum of those forces, the sum of the horizontal forces, um, then we'll come and use the vertical component to find the resultant. Okay. Now, what we need to do is we need to go to our formula sheet, which is looks a bit like this, um, and we're going to use that formula. Um, we'll have a little look at that one, although we don't need to use it because we've already been given that information, so we're only concerned about the components of the force acting horizontally. So let's have a little look at answering this question here. Just grab that, move that out of the way. Okay, so as I said, um, we're going to work out what's going on horizontally here, here, and here. Um, now, when you look at your horizontal component, the calculation fx. So you imagine you've got a graph x along the horizontal axis, y up on the top. So that formula is f cos theta. Okay. Now you remember from our previous sessions that um, this force coming in to the right horizontally is a positive and these two are negative because they're going to the left. So we need to be very careful where we put this information when we're coming up with our solution. Alright, so let's calculate the horizontal component of the whole thing. So we're going to take 3 cos 30, which is a positive. And obviously you don't need to write that in there but you can do if it makes it easier for you to comprehend again this is just me working my way through you might want to come up with a slightly different layer um, again only through practice will you become uh, good at this sort of stuff um, and we're going to take the next force which is the 5 cos 45 and it's a minus this time because it's coming in the opposite direction and we're going to minus the 2 cos 60. now again you can put all this in your calculator at once if you want. If you're going to do that, you need to make sure you put some brackets around these, uh, just so that doesn't confuse the calculator um, or yourself. Um, you can work them out separately and write them in, like I'm going to do now. So I've got 3 cos 30, which works at that. And we'll only do 2.60. So we'll do two decimal places. That will be sufficient. We're going to minus 3.54. And we're going to minus one all right yeah uh, double check these numbers because even although i'm doing the video i might even get them wrong then again now when we've done that we're going to find the sum of these forces now don't forget that's a positive so it's 2.6 minus 3.54 minus one which gives us an answer of minus 1.94 kilonews okay now the question's not finished at this point because we've only got fx so what we need to do now is we need to calculate fr now you remember that when we were working our way through these we used pythagoras theorem which looks for a squared plus b squared equals c squared so we really what we're trying to find out is what c squared does so we're going to rearrange this formula but we're not going to use a b and c we're going to use the symbols that allow us to identify fr which is resultant so we've got fr and then rearrange that formula is the square root of f x which is the horizontal squared plus f y which is the vertical squared and that will give us the resultant force which is asking what it's asking the question is asking us to do 
Okay, so let's go and plumb some values in here. Now don't forget, we've already been given Fy, which is up here. So the square root of one minus 1.94. Now, the observant ones among you will remember or have noticed that if we square that value, it will cancel that out. So you don't even need to put that minus in there. Um, but we're going to add 3.31 squared, and that will give us the resultant force. And they'll give you a sec to pop that into your calculator. So we get 3.84 times 10 to the 3 newtons. And that's our resultant force. Okay, so I'll just write that down there. I'll write it down in um, not standard form, but in engineering notation there. So we're going to go 3.84 kilo newtons. There is a different technique to answer this, but I find that's the easiest method. Obviously, if you want to work your way through it, that's entirely fine. Um, again, you can, as I keep saying, you can write your own questions, change some of the numbers, come up with the answers, and away we go. Okay, right, thanks for listening, and uh, don't forget, if you need any help, let me know. Bye-bye.